Hi, I'm Ashley Bratzel, and this is my Persistent Blossoms blanket designed for Crochet Now magazine, issue 93, which was released in the spring of 2023. You can come make a small square with me here and then follow the pattern to make the big squares, make them over and over and over, and you can have a pretty blanket too. To make this blanket, you are going to need the pattern. You are going to need some yarn. We're going to use four skeins of the white, it's the main color, and then one skein of every other color. This is purple, but it's called lavender blue, gold or yellow, strawberry, pink, and then the actual blue is called cobalt blue. And I'm pretty sure the white is simply called white, yeah. These are all Karen Simply Soft. You can use a different brand if you want, but that is what it is designed for. This is the square, the large square. The small square is really just the inner portion. So it's the same pattern. You start with the small square and you either cut the yarn and be done, or you keep going to make the big square. You're going to need scissors. I almost forgot to mention the five millimeter crochet hook that you will also need. And I am so sorry to tell you, you are going to need a needle. You're going to need to weave in the end. When you're done here, you'll have a pink and a white from the start. And then wherever your final corner is, you'll have a pink and a white on every single large square. So you'll have four ends per square. We are going to be making six large squares of every single color, and we'll make a seventh large square using the purple. So that's a lot of ends to weave. Oh, cat, get off my computer. Uh, cat, definitely not recommended for helping. He is not a good helper. And we are going to be making 16 small squares of every color, so 16 times four. And each of those small squares has four ends to weave in, and I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry I designed like that, but that's what it does. Popcorn, you can't be here, you're not a good helper. You're really not. So I'm going to make a small pink square. Main color is the white. That's the center dot in the big square and the small square, it doesn't matter which color you're using. The center dot is white, that counts as our main color for this design. Start with the magic ring, pinch it here, wrap it around two fingers, and cross it at the top so that it goes now to the other side. Going under this loop, pull this one up, give it a bit of a twist, and then grab the string again, just to make a chain, that kind of locks it in. This two side, there's two strings over here and one string over here, you're going to crochet over the two part. This chain doesn't count as anything, so we're going to go eight single crochet inside the loop. One, two, three, four, I don't like it when the loop is too big, it gets a bit floppy. <laughs> five, six, seven, and eight. Now, this is the tail you'll pull to make that middle hole be really tiny, but we're not gonna tighten it all the way until we've joined because it ends up tightening that first stitch as well. We're gonna do an invisible join, which means we take our yarn off the hook and we pick up, this was our first single crochet here, the V, the two loops, the back loop and the front loop. We're going to pick up the whole stitch starting at the back. It's just kind of weird, right? We don't normally do this in crochet. And we just put the loop back on and pull it through. Now you can tighten this tail. However, it will loosen as you're working. You have to actually weave it in back and forth a whole bunch of times to make it stay. So tighten it if you like, but know that it's going to loosen until you're actually done with it. To switch to our next color, I have four colors in this design. We just picked pink for this one. We pull up a loop, then we tighten the white one, and we are going to make sure that this tail just sort of stays out of the way because I need to be able to weave him in later. So we've tightened the white. I'm going to bring the white across to the front to carry it under this pink. I'm going to make one chain really tight. You can pull this tail too, but you just, this doesn't count as anything. It's just a changing colors method. And now we're going to start on row two 
It starts with a single crochet corner. We're going to use the back loop of this stitch that's closest to where we made our knot. We're just going to grab the back loop and we're going to carry this white one just for one stitch. We're going to lay it across where the white is on the hook. We're going to make this white doubled up there for one stitch. So we do our single crochet and then we're done with that white. It's just in the right place the next round. So we're done with him. Chain and single crochet into that same spot for our corner. Then we do one single crochet and that's the side. That's where the star ends. We're going to repeat it for all the sides of the square. We don't have a square yet, but we're making a square. We'll single crochet corner, which is a single crochet, a chain, and another single crochet in the same spot, and one single crochet. That's now we're doing the third side corner and one single crochet in the back loop. Now our fourth side, we're going to do our corner. and one single crochet in the back loop only. To join it, again, we're going to do that invisible join, taking our hook off. Our first stitch was the single crochet that goes in the corner. So in this stitch here, you can see we've got single crochet, chain, and single crochet. So this is the stitch we're going to use. Under both loops, starting at the back, put the loop on and pull it through tighten it. Now technically this is not invisible invisible because you can see this loop here. This is what we've just pulled through, right? When it comes to the next round, you are going to ignore that this exists. If you tighten it enough, you won't see it. If you're not quite tight enough, you'll still see it. You have to pretend it doesn't exist. We're not putting stitches into the yarn there, okay? So we're going to switch to our other color again. We just Bring up a loop of the other color, tighten this and bring it forward to carry it. Then we do one chain and tighten it lots. That's the color switching method. Now our first stitch is going to be in the back loop of the chain that was making up that corner stitches. So we had single crochet, chain, single crochet, all into the corner. The next corner goes into the chain. The back loop only because it's a single crochet. And we're going to carry the pink one just one stitch. So we go single crochet, move the pink away. Chain one, single crochet in the same spot because it's a corner stitch. Then we have three single crochets in the back loop because this is mosaic crochet. And that's the end of the side. Now as we start our next side, we're going to be using, it's the chain of the corner from the previous round. That's how we know we're in the right spot. Corners go into corner chain. It's the only time you're making a chain, so the corners are always using the chain stitch. And you're still grabbing the back loop because we're doing single crochet. One, two, three the corner again, chain, and in the same spot. So that makes the single crochet corner. One, two, three. Single crochet corner. One, two and now our third stitch this one's hard to find sometimes because things get a bit smushy here the knot that we had made when we changed colors is kind of pushing things forward but what we need to look at is the stitch this right here is that invisible join we're going to ignore it so this stitch here is the one that we use we're going to go into the back loop we can push this stuff out of the way so that we can find our back loop to make our third single crochet of the side, right? And we bring up a stitch. So if we're very closely looking, you can see right here was actually the join. It's not invisible. You can see it. We're not magic. It's okay. But it 
looks very similar to everything else. You can't tell. So we're going to do it again. Grab that single crochet. You can put stitch markers in your stitches if you're finding it really hard to figure out which stitches you're using, right? So we're going to switch the colors. Tight, tight, tight. That's just the color switching. Now our first stitch goes into the chain, the back loop of the chain. And I like to carry the white. So we're going to go single crochet. Now you can put a stitch marker here so that you know those are the loops you're using. Chain one and single crochet again in the same spot. Now for this round we are not only doing single crochets. So our first stitch is still a single crochet. The next stitch is a double. We yarn over instead of using the back loop here and we're not using the white front loop either. We're going to drop down and use the front loop of the pink two rows down to do a double crochet. And it means that the tops are all lining up but the double crochet gets dropped down low. The next stitch is a single crochet. When you do a double, you're going to skip these loops behind there. So the next stitch uses this one. That means back here there's a loop that hasn't been used. We're going to single crochet and then again a double. So these loops will not get used. We're going to drop it down and grab the loop from the front. And our final stitch is a single crochet. That is the side. Now we turn it and we do the corner again. Oh, don't let go. There we go. Corner is a single crochet, a chain, and a single crochet in the same spot. Then we're going to go single, double, single, double, single. Turn your work. Corner one and two. Single, double, single, double, single. Turn our work. Single and single. Single, double, single, we are not a bit of a fluffy thing but it went right through, no biggie. Double, so when we're doing this double, this is the stitch we skipped, this was our join, so this is the loop that we're using. And the final stitch of the round. Yeah, that thing didn't really, it's just kind of a, a little blip in the yarn. Don't cut the yarn, but I'm just going to cut this fluffy blip off. So again, skipping that, we're going to use the back loop of this smushed single crochet. If you put a stitch marker in, make sure you're grabbing the back loop. And then we do our invisible join. Grab our white, pull it through, bring it to the front. Tighten this one. It's hiding it along the back. So we're going to use our corner, carry the pink, single crochet, chain, and then the single crochet in the same spot but we're not carrying the pink that time, right? Now we're going to do one single crochet, one double. It's going to be, it's going to go around this little blossom petals, you know? We go one, two, three. Then we drop it down. 
single crochet. So that's the side. Repeating it, we're going to start with the corner again. Single chain, single for our corner. One stitch. Then we go drop down. You can see it does pull this loop up when you're working with it. Usually I kind of well, I pinch it down so that it doesn't yank on it too much while I'm crocheting, but it will loosen up and stretch back down if you're not too rough on them. This is where I would I pinch it a little just so that it's not yanking on them so hard, but it will fix itself. It's not um, a horrible gap. If you're using a huge hook, maybe your gap is large, but that would just be all of your stitches are probably large then. Using a bigger hook does give your fabric more flexibility, like bendableness, right? But then you get some gaps, so you have to kind of balance it between how tight you want the stitches and how tight you want the fabric. Pick up our dropped and our single and we're back to the corner. One, two, three. Oops, my yarn. Drop down. Again, you can sort of see where our invisible join was. Make sure you're using, this is our chain, the front loop of the chain. And then this one is the single crochet from before. That's the one you want to grab. You're going to ignore that invisible join. The final stitch can be hard, but it's just this flattened one. It's been smushed because we're tightening all the joins behind it. Single crochet. And then our final join. Now, if we're making a small square, that's the end of it. So we can pull the white through, and now we can cut these, both of them. You want to leave enough that you can weave it in and out, make your knot secure, but you don't want so much that you're wasting yarn. So this is usually where I go. I don't know if it's right, it's just what I do. And we're going to tighten this one, and now we need our knot to be woven in. There's a little square. If you keep going, you follow the pattern, you don't cut your yarn here, you would keep going, right? To make the large squares. Now you're going to take your needle and you're going to weave this in. I like to start with, it doesn't really matter, but I like to start with the middle hole. Make sure it's pulled tight and then pick up some fabric some yarns, go through stitches, don't necessarily go through the yarn, don't necessarily just go under the stitches. And it is difficult to pull it through because you've tightened it. If it's not tight enough, it won't stay closed, right? So go up and down and back and forth and sideways, staying in the white so that it's not being shown. And that's, that's how you do it. And you go, I go usually three or four times, depending on how tight things feel. This, um, this yarn, Karen Simply Soft, is a slippery yarn. Some yarns, if you're using wool, for example, they kind of, they'll felt together and you won't have as much of a problem. This is acrylic and it's a very shiny acrylic, which means you have to weave in a lot or it will slip apart. However, once you've done it properly, it should be good. I've never had a problem. Oh yeah. And then we just trim. I try to use up most of the yarn so that I don't have to trim much. But once you get too short, there's nothing left for your um, needle to pull on, right? This one doesn't have as much pressure on it because it's already been locked in and it's not holding the whole square together. 
but again I stick with pink into the pink and just kind of weave it in take care that you're not going too far you don't want it to be shown on this side this side it shouldn't be visible either but sometimes it does show a little bit um, just it's the wrong side so it's okay if it gets too short sometimes I have to weave it in here because I've run out of yarn but I know it's not woven in enough right so I put it through and then I weave it into the hole because it's too short for me to do them the steps properly and hopefully you won't need that trick but if you're like me and you leave your ends too short this is often what I have to do because I'm a goofball gone this uh, again the same deal pink into pink white into white this pink oh you don't have to carry it the first stitch when you're doing your final round but I often forget that I'm doing a small square so the first place I weave is under that second stitch just to get back to the pink area go into itself go backwards go forwards make sure you're going through the fibers of the stitches This one, I made a knot here when I finished. I pulled it through the chain. I try to go through the stitches, avoiding these outer stitches, because I still want to use these stitches to join the squares later. And if you weave through this area, sometimes it makes it difficult to find the stitch that you're trying to use. So try to stay low, close to the pink. I suppose you could weave in your ends after your blankets all joined together, but that seems really hard to me because then you'd have like, see, I'm put my hand on both sides of the square. If I have a whole blanket to hold on to, that'll be very difficult. Also, when you're pulling it tight, you don't want to distort your square, so you have to pay attention to how tight you're pulling things. And then that'll be it. Takes a while to do the ends weaving in. It's pretty much everyone's least favorite part. You can complain in the Facebook groups and people will commiserate with you and it'll be a good team building exercise. Now, these little squares, you can block them. They are, they are acrylic if you're using the Simply Soft. So a steam blocking or even a wet blocking. If you use steam, don't get it too hot because it'll melt the acrylic fibers. And then we will join these squares. The first thing I did was lay out all my squares. You don't have to do this step. I actually have a pink square in each of my corners, which is not required. You can put any color in the corners. And I started joining at the bottom left corner, um, not exactly corner. You can see where I have the purple square and the yellow square are joined, but below it, you can start with the tiny purple and pink. And then you just go straight up and you join all of your vertical lines. After you've joined all the vertical lines, so you've got two teeny ones at the top and two teeny ones at the bottom, then you can go back and join all of the horizontal lines. I start by joining all of the small squares to the top and bottom of my blanket, just so that I don't lose them in my project bag. 
And then I go back and join all the other horizontal lines that need to be done. And that leaves those teeny tiny squares that haven't been joined at all the edges. That's the last job and it's a big job and you have a lot of ends to weave in, but that is how you do it. That's what you get. When it comes to actually joining your squares, you can do it whichever way you prefer. I only have one of these squares, so I'm going to join it to uh, a different pattern, which you can just pretend like that's the same as here. The plan is to join them all with white yarn. I'm going to use this dark pink. And you're going to start with two small squares, ideally, because then you don't have as many ends to weave in. You don't want to join these two small squares and then also have ends where they're connected. So pretend that these are two small squares and we are going to find the corners. You have a single crochet and a chain and a single crochet right in the corners. So we're going to grab the back loop of the chain. So we have the wrong sides put together. We got the corner chain here and we have to find a corner chain here, but pick still the back loop. So it's actually the front loop when you're looking at it this way. So it depends on how you want to think of it. When you're looking at your piece and you find the back loop of the chain and then you join them together, it's really the loops that are closest to each other because they're both at the back of the squares and we're putting the back of the squares together. And this is the end that you'll have to weave in, which really sucks. I know it does. So this end here, when we're done, you want to weave it in and hide it. But for now, we're going to leave it long and I'm just going to make a chain that kind of locks it together. And now what you're going to do is follow this line. We are going to be joining in the back loop on each side, doing a slip stitch. So this is a braided join, a type of braided join. I don't know if they have different names, but we've got both loops attached at the bottom. And now you just pick one side. We're going in the back loop. We pull up the loop and we slip stitch. We just go all the way through. And now we go to the other side and we're going to keep this yarn in the middle. So we go to this side and we find the loop that's closest to each other. It's like the back loop of the square and the back loop of the square. And we pull it through all the way through. It's a slip stitch. Then we go back here. We don't want to skip any of these stitches. So it's one stitch over here, one stitch over there, which really means you're going to be doing, if, you're, if your square has 30 stitches, you'll be doing 60 slip stitches because you'll one here, one here, one here, one here, and you don't skip any. And it creates uh, a seam that you can see, which if you were using white, it would be a nice contrasting color. Mine is ridiculous with the dark pink, but that's okay. And you can see the seam, but it is relatively flat. And because we are using the back loops of this square, when you lay it down, it kind of sits in between the squares, not entirely in between. It does have a little bit of a raised bump, but that is the join that I prefer to use. You can use whatever other join you would like. If you want to change that up, it doesn't bother me at all, but this is the one I like. So you're going to pretend that you've joined this whole square to this whole square, they're, they're joined, and you get to an intersection. You use the chain between the corners. You have a single crochet and a single crochet with a chain. The chain is the very cornerest spot. Is that a word, cornerest? So I've used green. The next would be pink. So if I'm going up here, I'm just going to pretend that this one is already joined, even though they're not, and I'm going to keep going. I don't want to cut the yarn because that means I have more tails to weave in, and this design already has so many tails to weave in. We don't want to make any extras that don't need to be there. And then we come back down here and we've used up this one. So we have to go to the next square. I know these are not the same design, but it's okay. You can extrapolate from the data, right? I know you can. And then you just keep going the way you had been. And you can go all the way up and you join as many squares as need to be done. And then you only cut your yarn once you get to the end. That way you don't have to join so many ends at the end. That way you don't have to weave in so many ends. I mean, that's what I meant. And then when we go to do all of these sides, you would start at the corner. I'm not going to because I just want to show you the intersection. The corner, you would start at the corner like normal. When you get to the intersection, let's see if I can line them up. So this is the two, one, yeah. So we'll pretend that I was already doing this. One, two, three. So you can see how the yarn, oops, we want to keep the yarn, I already made a mistake. The yarn has to be under and between the squares so that when you're grabbing it, it's still coming up. This isn't tight. And we go back and forth, back and forth. 
and we get to an intersection we want to use the final stitch that was there plus we want to use this corner one again because I don't like the gaps I want to make sure that there's no holes so I use the corner again here and at some point this has to cross over it's it's fine to do it now it's fine to do it next and then over here we're going to use the corners again so we're still going back and forth between we just go right over the intersection we're not cutting the yarn we don't want extra things to weave in and that's how we can do the intersections which we have a lot of when you have so many squares and then your join it has this direction and this direction no holes People always want to see the back side. This is what the back looks like, and this is the front. So we do have a definite right side and wrong side, and in snow, it can keep whatever you want warm.